Dr. Mickey McComb Kobza. I'm the director of Ocean First Institute, and I am here in South Africa on a white shark mission. And I'm here with our partners, South African National Parks, Ocean Conservation, Exploration and Education Foundation, and Rhodes University, all to find out what's happening to white sharks here. The whole world knows now that we have had white sharks leave the area because of killer whales. And our goal here is to be able to tag the shark to find out where they are going. I'm Dr. Alison Koch. I'm a marine biologist with South African National Parks, and I do research and monitoring on our marine protected areas in South Africa. Robben Island is a marine protected area adjacent to the city of Cape Town and it's one of our recent marine protected areas declared in 2019. It's uh, an area that's very, very well known as um, the site where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for many years. It's a World Heritage Site, but we don't know a lot about the marine life. What we're trying to do here is um, get baselines of the marine life so that we can monitor our management into the future, how well our marine protected area is doing. <laughs> to monitor the marine protected area, we're using baited remote underwater video cameras. This is a really fantastic technique to look at the diversity and the abundance of the marine life without having to catch it. Vessel is ready for deployment. Temperature is 15. This point? That way, please. Yeah. The Robben Island Marine Protected Area is a very large marine protected area. We've got six baited remote underwater video cameras, and what we have to do to cover the whole area is deploy these three times. So, what we're going to do is deploy six in a row, and then we're going to retrieve those. We're going to change over the memory cards, the batteries, and then we're going to redeploy them all again. And then we're going to do that a third time as well. So it's going to be a long day at sea, but it means right. we're going to be able to monitor the whole island. We are at 17 meters, 48. Nine to seven. Point two nine. So we are at Robin Island right now, and we're going to tow for microplastics using this um, plankton tow net. And so here, the, all the water will flow through here and collect all the plastic and other um, critters that we get in this in this cod end um, container. And what this does here, this is called a flow meter, and so this will rotate a certain amount, and it basically allows us to standardize how much water flows through the net so that we can calculate how much water came through and how much plastic concentration is in the water. So you can already see you've got some floating. Oh yeah, look at the blue piece right there. So that's definitely microplastic right here. What's been really incredible for me is this huge collaboration between our different institutes and different scientists. And what's been extra special for me is having Yonela and Sasanda join me. And Yonela and Sasanda really are driving the baited remote underwater video work, spending long days at sea and also having to go back and analyze all the data. So they've never seen a white shark before. And so to be able to bring them along on the second part of the expedition, which is to satellite tag a white shark, is incredibly exciting for me. Well, we got a seal here, male about a six, seven year old, that's captured quite a big octopus. He's currently feeding on the octopus, ripping it to pieces. So yeah, it's quite a spectacle and good to watch. We have 12 more stations to go, 12 more stations. Hang in there, hang in there. Yeah, come on. Oh, well, my trainer will be proud. Seven more. Three more. 
Last one. Come on! Come on! Oh, pull it off! This really is the last one. <laughs> oh, that's the end of the day. The end of a long day. are east of Cape Town in the southernmost part of Africa in a town called Strasby. And we're here because we think that the white sharks are moving east. Yeah, because then we've got that one. We got that. My name's Alison Towner and I'm a marine biologist based down in South Africa. And I'm joining on board this incredible Southern African white shark mission. We're going to try and locate an elusive white shark the thing is, these animals have changed their distribution. So we're hoping to find one. If we do, then the aim is to get a satellite tag onto it to try and find out where it's spending its time. We've got these satellite tags and it's the day before deployment. We're going to set them up and program them for about a year. We think this will allow us to understand where the sharks are going and what the environment is like where they are. What's really important for us is that we paint these tags with an anti-fouling paint to prevent growth, which means that when they pop off, off the shark, they pop to the surface and they're able to transmit their data to the satellite overhead. So this tag that Alison's setting up here looks like this. It's an umbrella dart head. So the idea behind this is the needle goes right through it like so, and then that attaches to the spear gun or the tagging pole. And then as the shark swims past, it gets embedded. We are gonna go out and see if we can find one of the elusive Southern African great white sharks. And if we do, then the aim is to get a satellite tag in the animal. How often do we chum? Well, the chum slick we need to keep going as a consistent thing. So you see that, that big oily um, sort of slick that comes off the back of the boat, that's all of our chum. Yeah. And the idea is that the shark then finds that downwind of the boat and it locates the boat through its sense of smell. The further the chum slick goes, the better the chance or the better surface area we have coverage to, to get a white shark. So I'm just making a line with heads on it that we're going to use as a teaser. Keep this just hanging here for you. Yeah. How to tag a great white shark? Well, many people think it's easy. In actual fact, it really isn't. First and foremost, you need to get that white shark close enough to the boat in order to reach it with the tagging gun or the tagging pole. And you need to use a bait line to do that. So white sharks often, when they, when they um, approach a vessel, they'll circle the vessel. And so then what we use is just a fish head on the end of a rope in order to lure the shark close enough so that we can then deploy the transmitter in the sweet spot. And that sweet spot is located right around the dorsal fin area. Um, many times it can happen that the shark just isn't interested in going for the bait, or sometimes that it just doesn't swim within range enough to be able to reach it with a tag. So it can take a few attempts, but ultimately once that tag's on, there is never a moment that we don't appreciate and feel absolute gratitude as researchers. So that's what we anticipate to do. Um, we'll just have to see how it goes out there. Hopefully luck's on our side. What does this tool do? This is um, a very basic environmental probe, so it's monitoring dissolved oxygen in the water, exact sea surface temperature. There's no reason looking at the water parameters now why a white shark wouldn't be here. It's not like we've got low oxygen or low temperature or anything like that. It's, it's actually perfect. Yeah, now we just sit and wait. Sharks, but it's cool to see these bronze whalers too. Yeah. That was incredible. After 10 hours at sea, we didn't encounter any white sharks. We're experiencing the problem. White sharks are no longer here in the numbers they used to be. I think he eat all of them. <laughs> oh. 
We have and coffee. So why have white sharks changed their distribution? Well, it's no mystery now, but back in 2015, it really was. In Cape Town, where white sharks were very regularly seen, all of a sudden, they just vanished. Two years later, the same thing occurred in Hansby, a location a couple of hundred miles down the coast, where I was based, researching white sharks on a daily basis. Now, at first, many questions surrounded this phenomenon as to what had caused it. Was it possibly a population decline in the white sharks? Was it possibly related to a shift in their prey? But lo and behold, in 2022, we now finally have evidence. We know what caused it, and it was killer whales, commonly known as orca. Down here in South Africa, there's a specific offshore ecotype that have arrived along the coast with a taste for shark. They have become highly specialized in hunting great white sharks, and it's these individuals that have caused the displacements or the site abandonments that we've seen in the Cape. So right now, where do we locate great white sharks in Southern Africa? It really is anyone's guess at the moment. Um, we just got evidence from drone footage of how killer whales hunt white sharks, how they manipulate them into a position and extract their liver. It's like we've kind of got all the pieces of the puzzle, but in the aftermath of all this, where do we locate white sharks? And where have many of them vanished to? Because of course, they can't all have been eaten. So there are so many complexities and questions that need answering, uh, especially at a time that we've got this critical change. And our mission right now is to go and get a satellite tag on a white shark so we can better understand what the consequences of this are. Ah, sorry, Carol. I'm really so we're going to be deploying a baited remote underwater video camera that's going to sit on the sea floor and it's a nice reef area so we expect to see quite a lot of reef fish and maybe some species of shark. So this will sit down for a couple of hours and then we're going to be able to um, film those and see what's around us here while we are waiting for the white sharks. Well, let's see what we get. Okay, but yeah, it's great. Just as another visual target to keep the shark interested. And suddenly, there she was. White shark! Now we need to be on our game. So Lisa, upstairs, if you just give us visuals, if you see the shark coming round. So it can be quite challenging to get the satellite tag on the shark and um, sometimes we might just have one chance, maybe we're lucky and we get a second chance. And what we're going to do is use a modified spear gun and what this does is allows us to insert the tag at the base of the dorsal fin. So we're going to put the satellite tag on the spear gun and then as the shark is um, swimming close to the boat, we're going to try and deploy this tag right below the base of the dorsal fin. Um, but it can be really challenging because the shark has to come a specific way, you have to have a specific amount of force and the boat is rocking and there's a lot going on. Turning. And... Ah, too far. Mm. Yep. Good. Mm. Very beautiful. Go, Alison. Oh. oh! I normally use a tagging gun. Um, it gives me a lot more control over where the tag is placed at the base of the dorsal fin. But sometimes uh, the power or the elastics is not enough. In this particular case, I tried to tag the shark and it just bounced off. And so what we decided to do is rather use the pole because we only get two chances. We use Chris's brute strength and he's just going to line up like Alison did and he's just going to hit base dorsal. Okay. Try not to hit low. Okay. Is it now? Is it now? That's my, that's my first satellite tag deployment. <laughs> There is a white shark that was just tagged with a PSAT that's going to help us understand where the shark goes and it's going to help answer some questions that the South African biologists are trying to understand and it's just one more tool in the kit that they have to answer these questions and to figure out where these sharks are going. Mission accomplished. <laughs>